Hello everybody, I'm Chris Segrell and uh, Principal of Christ the King School and I'm here with Amy Becker, Assistant Principal at Christ the King School. And as always, we're happy to, to be here with you. Um, we actually have a lot of things to go over today and we have two special guests with us yep. as well. So we're going to kind of move right along. And the first thing I want to say is, uh, you know, congratulations to everybody really because we have completed six weeks of school now. And that's kind of amazing to really look back on when you see all the things or you think about all the things we had to do. We have had some exposures outside of school. You know, we've, we continue to have that once in a while. We did have a couple things this week that we were kind of concerned about. We had one that could have impacted a sixth grade soccer team that wound up being okay. Um, definitely the sixth grade families all knew about this. It was something that very, very isolated to sixth grade because of an out, outside activity. Uh, but then we also had uh, one involving uh, uh, one of our fourth grade classes. Um, we are still working through this. It's probably going to be okay. It looks like it's going to be okay. We're not 100% sure now, but it's looking very, very promising right now. And an email was sent out to all parents uh, today about that. So, um, but these things, we know they're going to happen. Uh, we really don't want them to happen. And we just really do need your help to keep these things from happening. And I'll go into that a little bit more in just a minute. We do have uh, two next things that always seem to keep coming up. And so I really want to stress these again. And the first one is um, if there's anybody in your immediate family or household that has been tested and you're waiting for test results, no, no students from that family can come to school. You've got to keep them home until we know that the test results are negative. Um, we seem to keep running into this, and that's why I do stress that, that please, please do that. Because if the person who's being tested, if the test comes back positive, then all of a sudden we have exposures uh, involving the kids that have come to school. And it just, it just keeps it, it just makes it harder for us here at school if we have that kind of thing going on. So please, if anyone in your immediate family is being tested, has been tested, you're waiting for results, keep everybody home. Not only the students, but if you're a parent volunteer, stay home. We understand. We will fill the, the position. We'll right. work it. We just want to be very safe about that. The other thing is uh, about remote learning. A lot of people think that, you know, if I'm out for a couple days, I'll just go on remote learning. If I'm waiting for a COVID test for a day or two, I'll go on remote learning. But remote learning, it takes a lot of work to set it up for the teachers. It takes time. It runs a day or two behind in-person learning. So remote learning is for the longer quarantine periods. If we put your child on a 14 day quarantine period, they're gonna go on remote learning right away. That's what it's for. It's also for those families who opt for remote learning because they have some kind of medical concern because of COVID-19. So they're gonna be there for a while. That's what remote learning is for as well. Um, so I just want to say that again. We've said it a few times, but I, I know some, some people haven't, haven't uh, seen that or heard that yet, so we want to keep mentioning it. Uh, it is for those long-term things, not for just short-term absences for a couple of days. It's, it's just not for that. So it, like I said, it takes a lot for the teachers to put into place, and the teachers are working incredibly hard. I wish we could do more. I wish we could do everything like that, but we just, we just can't. We can't do that. So... Um, and then just, uh, you know, just to kind of sum up our, our, our school safety measures and our protocols, they are working because we've had little exposures outside of school here and there, uh, some involving just individuals, some families, uh, some sporting teams, um, and we've been able to work through all those. And we haven't had anything come into the school because we've been really safe about what we're doing. Uh, Mrs. Becker and I are constantly looking at all the programs and all the things that we're doing and we're tweaking and we're adjusting as we see that being necessary. Um, one of the things I just, we're, we're starting to talk with all the students, and I want to definitely talk with you parents as well, is don't let your guard down. I mean, just keep your guard up. Now that we've completed six weeks, we notice that, and this is true for students, it's true for everybody really, is some people are just kind of letting that guard down a little bit. The masks are falling down, they're getting together a little bit more, we're having to correct more of those things. Please keep that guard up, please stay vigilant because we need to constantly be that way because we don't want to take any chances and we don't want anything to happen. When, you're, when you're a parent of school-age kids, 
Um, the pressure is enormous. I, I totally feel you because they don't want to stay home all weekend and they want to do every activity like normal. Um, even my own family, you know, the cousins want to get together and play and I'm the sibling, the aunt that keeps, you know, our family at home. Um, it is so, I can't imagine not being here and, mm -hmm. and all the people that would have to fill in, um, you know, if, if I were home or if I had to be home because my kids were sick. So it's hard and we want you to know that we understand the sacrifices that you're making. You know, you have to be that uncool parent um, or, you know, the bad mom that says, no, we can't go do that. But every day when I'm in school and I see our kids together, and I see our teachers with them. I just walked by a math classroom where they all went, oh, I mean, it was amazing. I don't wanna lose that. And so there's not a family gathering or a, a, birthday, a party. birthday party or a play date in the world that is worth it once you're in the building and you see what our kids have every day. Mm -hmm. So avoid any of those risky gatherings and that is the whole thing, is to just minimize the risk. Keep that risk factor down. Uh, I do want to thank families that are doing this, because so many of you are doing this. We know it's hard. We know you're sacrificing, like Mrs. Becker said. Uh, we appreciate it. Those things are, are what is going to keep our school open, and we so want to keep our school open. All of us do. The kids are really happy to be here. Teachers, we're all happy to be here, and I know parents are happy that we're all here. So just please... We need you to do your part at home. We can only do so much at school, but we need your support at home. Because most of the things that we're seeing, they are happening outside of school. And we're dealing with them in school. We don't mind doing that. But it does kind of scare us a few times. And it does consume a lot of time and a lot of effort. And there's a lot of nervousness because of some of these things. And they all have been working out okay. And they're no big deal. But, you know, for a while we don't know sometimes. So please, just anything you could do to help us, we appreciate it. Uh, one thing uh, is, is true about uh, a lot of our procedures is that they are evolving. When we started this whole thing, Mrs. Becker and I, we did a handbook, we did all kinds of COVID procedures, everything, and it's amazing how much things have changed since, since we initially laid that out. And that's because we're learning and we're getting more experience and we're seeing and, ex and going through different things. One of the things that we did put in place very early on um, was the uh, travel restriction. If you as a family or your student, you know, is on a commercial aircraft um, and they, they travel. I mean, it's a confined space. You never know who's in that aircraft. You're there for a long period of time. If someone had COVID, you could be exposed. So we kind of took a very cautious approach and we said, you know, if you're on a commercial airplane like that, when you get back to Omaha, you got to quarantine for 14 days. That's what we did. Um, and we know that's a lot. It's a big sacrifice, uh, you know, to, to do and it's a big absence for kids in school. So. We've been kind of researching this and trying to balance everything out. And, and we're doing this all out of caution. I mean, we, we are, nobody's telling us we have to do this. We're, we're doing this because we just realize there could be a potential risk and we want to minimize that. But what we're doing is we're going to change that slightly just to make it maybe a little bit more reasonable. And we have run this by our expert and we've kind of researched this ourselves. But now uh, when you uh, are on a commercial aircraft, when you get back into Omaha, um, you can quarantine for 14 days. That's always always a possibility that or something you can do, and we would thank you for that. Uh, or if you want, as another option, you can get tested on the eighth day after you arrive back in Omaha. Um, that way, if you're exposed on the plane coming back, there's enough days you know for the virus to be picked up in a test. So uh, we are changing that. So you can quarantine for 14 days if you want to. Uh, or if you want to, on the eighth day, you can get a test or after the eighth day, and then if the test result comes back negative, then we can get you back in school immediately. So, um, so that, is, that is something that is, is a little bit different. And one of the things you have to do uh, is you have to get administration approval. I mean, we don't want you to just test and, okay, I got a negative result and I'm just back. You got to communicate, tell us, let us know what's going on. We need to know. We need to alert everybody that your child is coming back into school and so everyone kind of knows what's going on. So, uh, so that's a, a little bit of an uh, evolution of that particular policy and we might evolve it again, who knows, but this is kind of where we are right now with it. 
Um, moving on, there are several activities that are coming up, uh, and they always come up this time of the school year, actually a lot of them. And with all of our activities, we're trying to make things as normal as possible. And I know that's kind of hard to believe sometimes, but sometimes we can do an activity, we just need to do it in a little bit different way. So we're just gonna go through some of these activities that are coming up now that may be done in a little bit different way. And the first thing we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna let Mrs. Becker talk about this, is field trips. We said in the beginning of the year, okay, we're just not doing field trips. We've kind of evolved a little bit about that because we are finding that maybe we can do field trips, but maybe in a different way. So we've right. done one. I'll let Mrs. Becker talk about that one. I always get the, the fun things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. um, so Mr. Segrell is right. We really thought we're staying put. We're in our campus. We can keep ourselves safe. Um, many of you know that my husband uh, teaches at Duchenne Academy and he's the theater director there. And a few weeks ago, he contacted me and he said, I don't have an audience and I've been working on this play and I don't have an audience. Can you come? And I told him no. And he said, you can name your time. It's outdoors. You'll be the only school there. All the actors and the crew are wearing masks. Please, can you come? And so I talked with Mr. Segrell and we decided, you know, let's, let's try this. This seems like a really safe bet um, since it was just for us. So uh, Monday the 28th, I went with the third grade class. We were the only ones there. It was outdoors. It was chilly on Monday because um, we went right away in the morning. The actors were in masks. Our kids stayed in masks. We had a really good time. Uh, we had the windows open on the bus a little bit to keep the air flowing in the bus. Um, the students were amazing. They were so good and really had fun. Lots of laughs. And then on Tuesday, uh, Mrs. Barnhart and Mrs. Hightoff took the fifth grade. And um, I should say third grade is in two co cohorts, 3A and 3B. So we took two buses. We did not um, let them mix. Um, fifth grade is one solid cohort. And so they took one bus. Um, again, outside, wore their masks. They had sunshine and less wind, so they had a little nicer weather than we did. Um, and they had a wonderful time. And it was just really great to do something that felt normal. Um, you know, face masks, sure, not normal to see actors in masks. Um, but it was, it was really a good time. So we're grateful to Duchenne. Um, I'm grateful that Mr. Chagrell said, yep, this sounds safe, let's try it. Um, and so proud of our kids because they were they were wonderful. Um, coming, we're coming into the Halloween season, and I know there's so much discussion about how Halloween's got to look a little different this year. Again, we want to try to enjoy Halloween together um, in the most fun and traditional way that we can, making adjustments um, that allow us to be sure that we're we're staying within our safety guidelines. So. We do want to have the Halloween parade. Um, I love the Halloween parade. And so um, last year was my first time I had to dress up and like lead, be in the Halloween parade. It was awesome. So I don't want that to go away because I just now got to start doing it. Um, but we're going to do it a little different. We are going to do preschool through fourth grade and do a lap around the track. Um, we will not mix with other classes. There will be no gathering. We'll have an entrance and exit, an entrance staging area, so the, the next class will come down after the previous class leaves. Um, and we are we are discouraging anybody to, from coming to watch. We're gonna video, um, and we'll make a Halloween parade video. And we'll let the kids know where the camera is so they can get their moment in the sun. Um, and this will be something you'll always have. So we will more to come on that, but we want you to know weather permitting, these kiddos are gonna get their chance to parade outside. Um, we are gonna allow costumes, but your cloth face covering um, is the only mask that we want on our kiddos this year. No other masks to go over this, that's too much to manage. And I think a little worrisome, um, especially for our little ones who are trying to layer things up so just our face masks on um, and you'll be getting more information from your teachers as as this approaches and also in our videos and newsletters yeah, okay and uh, and like mrs becker said we discourage parents from coming to watch i know it's something you probably look forward to 
But because we have to take each class out individually, it's going to be spaced out over a long period of time. So we're going to have to really work that in a very different way. We don't think it's fair that a parent's out there for like three hours or something trying to wait for this and, and see their child. So, so just watch the video because it'll be a lot of fun. It'll yep. be a really good video. And if you normally didn't get to come see the parade because of work or whatever, now you'll get to see it. So that'll be kind of a nice thing. Also with Halloween, we have the parties. Uh, and the parties had to be a little different this year too. Uh, I, I'm sorry we got to do that. I'm glad we could do parties. But this year, the parties are going to be game and activity parties only. Um, normal cloth face masks have to be worn during the parties, so we can't be eating things because it just increases the risk too much. And I just really don't want to do that. So we're going to be very careful. So they're going to be game and activity parties only. Uh, the party parents, you know, might have something that kids can take with them, you know, that's a edible something later, but we're just not going to do that in the classroom. All of the uh, uh, parties will be in classrooms. Uh, elementary parties are usually in the classrooms anyway, so no change there. Um, middle school parties we usually have in big grade level groups, and we just can't do that this year. So we have to split up those groups into the cohorts that we kind of have in the school. So really, fifth grade is going to be in a two group, sixth grade, two groups, seventh grade, two groups. Um, so they're going to be in the first period classrooms and with those teachers. So we're going to need more volunteers, more helpers in those, in those parties this year in middle school as a result. They can still be a lot of fun. They just got to be just a little bit different for this year. And then the eighth grade. Eighth grade always looks forward to going to Vallis. That's just one of those things they always look forward to doing. And I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able to do that this year. It is just too risky to go to Vallis. We may wear masks, but everybody else there, we don't know what everyone else is doing. And it's just really crowded. And, and, and I, I just think it's just a little too unsafe to do something right. like that. So Mrs. Becker has been working with the eighth graders on what can we do instead. And, and the eighth graders are stepping up and they're getting involved yeah, in this. They, and They have a yeah. great plan. We... Um, we had a big class group, socially distanced, that put together some ideas and then we made a committee. Um, the committee had our first meeting on Wednesday. Um, they've mapped out where and how long they want their party to be. Um, they're gonna get to wear costumes, which they haven't gotten to do since fifth grade and um, are choosing their activities. And they're really excited about it. I'm proud of our kids for kind of going with the flow and. You know, they said they'll be the first class to have a Halloween party and eighth graders to wear costumes. And, and they're taking it in stride, and I think they're looking forward to the party. Yeah. So there will be, just like Mrs. Becker said for the parades, there'll be, there'll be more information coming out on the parties. I know Mrs. Andrews is preparing all kinds of stuff on that, and she'll send that out uh, so you'll get more information on that. And the party parents who are, who are planning the parties, doing the parties, uh, they'll get all that information as well, so they'll be up to speed on what needs to happen during the parties. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about here is, uh, until, until I turn it over to Mrs. Becker again, is uh, parent-teacher conferences. These are coming up at the end of October. We originally were planning to do these virtually, but now we're going to make a little change in that. It's Doing virtual conferences is uh, a lot different, and it's just not the same uh, so we kind of been going back and forth. We've been checking out the safety and the risk factors, and we think we've got a pretty good plan in place. So for parent-teacher conferences, we are going to offer these in person, um, but they are going to be for parents only. And we're going to just limit the number of parents that can be in the building based on the way we're scheduling things. So the conference day will still start at 7.30 in the morning and at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, but we're going to have sign-ups uh, for conference slots. And if you're an elementary parent and you've done this before, it's really going to be the same thing. Uh, middle school, instead of everybody going down to the cafeteria and everyone's down there and the teachers are down there, we're going to have the middle school teachers, core teachers, in their classrooms and they're going to have scheduled slots just like elementary. That's the only way we can control the number of, of uh, parents that are in the building. So in the past in middle school, we did the student-led conferences. We're not doing that this year because we want your students to stay home because we need to reduce the numbers of people in the building. So parents only during the conferences. Uh, we're looking at 10-minute conference slots. I know that doesn't seem that long. It goes by fast. 
Also, uh, we're going to build in five-minute blocks in between those 10-minute slots just so the teacher can, can sanitize and clean the classroom a little bit, the spot, so the next parents come into a clean environment. And also, those five minutes will give parents uh, a, a chance to kind of clear the hallways, clear the building uh, as necessary just so we can kind of keep everybody moving. Um, the book fair will also be set up in person in the library, but a limited number of parents will be able to come in at, at a time. Mrs. Clark, our new librarian, is, is working this whole thing. Uh, she's going to have everything set up. More information will be coming out on that. So the kids will see all the books and they'll make their choices and that information will get to parents. So it'll be a simple thing for you to just come in and get something if you'd like to do that. Um, so again, more information will be coming out on that. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Becker to talk about volunteers really quick. So my favorite group of people to talk about is our volunteers because they're amazing. Um, and we just continue to have people here every day doing a great job. And um, we can't thank you enough. Several people, um, parents that have done different jobs have said, you know, hey, I feel like I'm kind of in the way in this setting. You know, there's a teacher on duty. They're doing a great job. Do you really need me? or a person, um, or there's several of us assigned to this one task, and really we think maybe two could do it. So when I post in November um, the dates for the rest of the semester, um, or I guess in a couple weeks when I post November and December, I'm going to take a couple slots off. So we're backing down a little bit. Um, there are some areas that we can't, but where we can, we do want to respect um, your time and um, cover things that we can, you know, without needing to bring people into the building all the time. Um, October is up and has been, so please hit the link. I'm gonna put in the email that goes with this video link, the um, openings I have for next week. There are a lot of cafeteria openings. So um, Father Boyd did cafeteria last week and he said it's the best job. So if you're wanting to have a good time and see the whole school, Sign up for cafeteria and tell him you want to push the milk cart. Father Boyd said it was the best. <laughs> he highly recommends he, it. Yes, best. highly recommends. He said yeah. everybody should push the milk cart at least yeah. once. Yeah. Um, so look for that information on volunteering. When we started our videos from school with our students present in the building, um, I put out a question and um, I was hoping somebody would say we were as fashionable and cool as Tom Cruise. <laughs> But Caitlin Benden answered the question right, that our school theme was on a mission. And so we have been working um, around schedules and such to get us all together, but I'm excited to have Caitlin come on into our video. And she is bringing a friend with her, Molly Kinney. So, hi girls. Welcome, guys. These are two sixth grade students here at Christ the King. And we thought it was, would be a good time to see you know, we keep telling you everything's great here, but um, we hope they say the same. But we thought we'd ask them. So, um, Caitlin, what do you what do you think about being back in school? Um, it's good. Going, yeah. yeah. What What's the best part about being back? Just seeing our friends. Seeing your friends. How about you, Molly? What do you think um, about being back? I really like. I didn't really like the in person learning. I feel like it, um, it's more fun to interact with the teacher okay. and do more things like that. In person learning, if you wanted to ask a question, you might not want to. In the remote, show. when you were on like Zoom or whatever, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in person, you could do that very yeah. easily. Okay, right. yeah, that's good. That's what good. are some of the things that took the most getting used to coming back to school? Mass, mass. Okay. Okay. And I, I, I agree. I, I think we all agree with that yeah. one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there any changes that have been made that might actually be okay? Um. You want to go back to normal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things, and, and maybe this will uh, trigger your, your thoughts a little bit, but when I teach the world language or remote learning sometimes, um, they have the mask break built in. And so the class ends a few minutes early and we go outside and walk around. And I love going outside to walk around every hour. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Just a quick, brisk walk outside, it's just rejuvenating. And part of me kind of feels like even when we don't have to take a mask break, getting outside more often is really a nice thing. Yeah, just Are you enjoying them or do you think they're annoying? I like it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you like, like them or? Like okay, them. okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. 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 
I know everybody likes to visit on those math mass breaks, and it most is, of the classes don't take the mask off because they stay a little closer and they talk it's a little social bit. Time. So yeah, yeah. 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 So are both, do both of you girls do things other than school that have come back since, you know, we, we're trying to do more normal with COVID? Yeah. You don't. Your, no. your school is, is what you're working on. You have a little baby at home, right? Yeah. 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 So you're keeping you're people safe. safe at home. Very good. Kayla, what are you involved in? Volleyball. Okay. Volleyball. okay. And was it great to have that opportunity to have sports yeah. come back? Okay. How do you feel? I know you guys are practicing, but you're not playing games. Are you getting better? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we wanted. We wanted to build athletes, and is a it's nice to see your friends outside of school too. Then, mm -hmm. yeah, wonderful. Good. Very good. So we're so glad to have these girls with us and have their viewpoint that it is great to be back together, um, and to be getting involved in things. Um, and here we are wearing our masks, and we're doing okay, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're doing right. okay. Uh -huh. Terrific. Um, so I have a new question. Um, you guys can answer it too because I'm not going to give you the answers if you want. But um, <laughs> You can be back here again next time my, if you get it. My last question I think was too technical. Okay. I was hoping that somebody would email me the mission statement of the school. Um, I was look, thinking about the engagement review and hope, you know, and being very mission focused. And so, but that didn't go over so well. So um, we'll, we'll try something a little different. And I really hope I get some responses. Your question is, um, on October 1st, who were the volunteers for Class 3B? On October 1st, who were the volunteers on cla in Class 3B? So you might have to do a little research, ask around. Um, if you have a sibling, you could say, hey, who was in your classroom? Um, but email me and let me know, and you might find yourself um, guest starring in our videos. And, and this is who are the volunteers during lunch, right? Right, okay, the lunch, lunch. lunch. Okay, yep, yeah. in 3B. Yep. Who were the lunch volunteers in 3B On October, October 1st, 1st, which was yesterday? yesterday. Okay, yep. all right. Well, we yep. know there's a group of students that know the answer to that question, so right. hopefully we'll, we'll hear Maybe from they're them. Watching. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Becker, and thank you, ladies, for being here. Just stay with us, okay, because we're almost done. I told them that we had a lot to talk about before we got him in here, and uh, we did, huh? um, I probably should have had him bring a book so they could do something <laughs> yeah. while they were waiting, but they've been great, and uh, we appreciate you guys being on with us. It's been really a pleasure. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about is um, our teachers. Our teachers, uh, and we've said this many times, that they are working so hard. In Do you fact, love them? Yeah. Yes. Our teachers are working harder than I have ever seen them work before. Uh, they're doing in-person learning and they're having to be very creative with all the new procedures and everything that we're doing. Uh, they're doing it in a mask constantly too. Uh, they're doing remote learning for students who opt for that. Right now we're, we're down to 11 students that are, that are remote learning. A lot of them are coming back as they see things are working yes. out and we're, we love to have them back. The teachers are also doing remote learning practice in school, especially in the middle school and the upper grades. They're doing a lot of that. They're still doing it in the elementary too, not quite as much. But everyone is doing so many things, trying to juggle a lot of things at the same time. I'm just like juggling about eight different balls in the air at the same time, which is really hard and I really am so thankful for our teachers and everything that they are doing. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. And many of the teachers, and us included, are working all weekend. We're working the entire weekend. We're working a lot of times late at night. I mean, I'm up doing stuff until about midnight, 1 o'clock. And that's a consistent type of thing. The teachers are really working so, so hard. So Mrs. Becker and I, we got together and we thought, we got to do something to try to take care of our teachers because we don't want them to burn out. I mean, the, the pace is just tremendous right now. So we looked at the calendar and we designated three Fridays between now and Christmas break where we could just make those, instead of school days, we would make those teacher work days. So teachers can get some things done here at school. You know what that means for you, the <clears throat> teacher work day? Yeah. No school, okay? You heard it now, here first. All right, so, so now we'll have a celebration here, certainly. Uh, but I know that puts a little bit on you guys as parents because there's three days now that are not school days that you got to manage. But we, we're asking for your help on this so that our teachers can have this. So 
there are the three work days that we we're, we're, we're doing where we put them on the calendar, we're turning it, it into the teacher work day. So we're really letting you know these are the days that are going to not be school days anymore. They're going to be teacher work days. And one of them is, uh, is coming up in October. It's October 16th. This is the last day of the first quarter. Doing all the grades and everything that has to be done is a tremendous task this year. And so we thought that would be a really good one to start with. We know it's right around the corner, so we do apologize for the short notice to you guys as parents. The second one is November 13th. That's another Friday. And then the final one this, uh, this semester before Christmas break is December 11th. Um, we'll have Sherry put something out in a separate email, but we wanted to at least put it out in our video that October 16th, November 13th, and December 11th, these are days that are converting from school days where students are here to no school days for students, work days for the teachers. Teachers will be here doing their thing but it's gonna make such a difference to the teachers. We had a recent in-service day, um, I can't even remember what it was, September 21st, 21st? okay. Um, and Mrs. Becker and I had all kinds of things planned. The engagement review was coming up, you know, very the next day, and so many things we wanted to do with the teachers. And we saw how stressed everyone was and how overwhelmed everyone was trying to do everything and how tired everyone was. So we took really everything off off the plate that day and let the teachers work and it made such a difference it really really did so that prompted us to really look hard at this and so we've committed to doing this for our teachers we know parents want to do so much for the teachers as well so we're hoping everyone is okay with this and it doesn't create such a hardship for you um, we're going to look at maybe a few other days once we get into the new year um, but we're going to try to just strategically place those as, as well as we can and if we have an in-service day, we'll pull back on that so we don't want to impact parents as much. But certainly this semester, we just don't have that many in-service days. The next one we have is the 12th of October, and unfortunately it's packed with training that we just have to have, to have for some of the new programs that we're, we're dealing with this school year. So I just wanted to announce this today just so you had a heads up on that and knew those dates. And thank you in advance for... Uh, your support on that, we really do appreciate it, and our teachers appreciate Absolutely. it very, very much. Just to close out, um, I just want to say thank you. I mean, thank you to everybody. Thanks to our students for being so patient, cooperative, doing what they need to do. Our students make it either easy or hard for us all here at school, and they're making it easier for us because they're just doing what needs to be done, and we really do appreciate that. Uh, thank you, parents, for all your patience as we continue to navigate through all of these new things this school year. Um, thanks for your incredible support of our teachers, uh, just of the entire staff and of our school and of Mrs. Becker and myself. I mean, just it, it's overwhelming the support that we get, and we just appreciate that so much, and we are working so hard for you, and we will continue to do that. It's, uh, it's, it's a passion we have, and we just believe in this school. We believe in our students. We believe in just our, our Christ the King families. So this is something we're going to continue to do, and we're going to get through this together. Uh, so until next time, stay safe. Please avoid risky gatherings or any kind of risk-type things like we talked about. Do your part outside of school to make our job a little bit easier in school. We want to stay open. We want to keep going. It is so important to all of us. So thank you for that. Be strong and God bless. Bye. Bye-bye now.